Well, good morning. My name is Jason Beaver. Uh, uh, some of you recognize me from my time here on staff, or you're newer, uh, maybe up here doing stage host announcements or serving in our student ministry. Um, I'm excited to really be given this opportunity again to, to be back up here. Um, it's been probably a little over two and a half years uh, since I've preached in this room, uh, and so I'm just grateful for the opportunity uh, to continue in the series that we've been looking at called Streaks. And so Mike has, has laid out these last three weeks, this idea of these habits that we can create over time that are not only going to impact us personally, but also spiritually, that if we be, develop these streaks, this consistency, this day-to-day process potentially, um, that it's going to have a significant impact. And so in week one, Mike talked to us about this idea of reading and reflection of scripture, that the more time that we spend in his word, the more we get to understand who he is, how he calls us to live, the lifestyle he longs for us to have, and more importantly, the relationship that he calls and longs for us to have. And Mike shared in, in that a study that states that um, like four is really the magic number, right? That at four times a week, if you can build a habit of continuing the streak of consistency, uh, that there's some exponential growth that happens in understanding Uh, who Jesus is, what he wants for you, and the things that he has for us, and really his his mission of seeking others first. And um, so for me, I've started again this year uh, reading through the Bible in a year on the YouVersion app, Uh, but I uh, don't do full seven days a week. I do five days a week, uh, because it builds into the rhythm that I have. Um, And each week, I have to go and catch myself back up over the weekend. I just know my weekends probably won't work, and and I allow myself that grace. And so I would encourage you um, that if you've tried to start in that habit and you've missed, uh, it's okay to catch back up, right? Just don't allow it to continue to to sit there and and use that as an excuse not to develop that habit. Uh, In week two, Mike talked about this idea of prayer, Um, and we looked at this idea of of guidance, uh, for prayer for guidance and confession. If we're all honest, right, we all come in those moments at times that prayer for guidance is easy, no matter where we're at in our relationship with Jesus, right? We may not even have a relationship with him, but that we still uh, understand what it means to pray uh, and seek guidance or seek for help and ask for God to intervene. Uh, Prayer confession is a little difficult, right? We don't want people to see our vulnerabilities, our weaknesses, uh, or the things that we struggle with, and so we may shy away from that. The scripture is very clear, right, that if we confess our sins to God, right, he will separate uh, those as far as the east is from the west. And then James, we're reminded that if we confess to one another, right, that there's healing and power that can come from that, accountability that can be brought into that, that's going to help uh, you deal with the areas in your lives that, that you want to grow in and that Jesus wants you to grow in. And then last week, he talked to us about this idea of serving, and he said that uh, in our in our spiritual walk, right, where we're at in that, that serving is one of those catalysts, just like uh, reading and reflecting on scripture, uh, that serving others, putting the needs of others above ourselves uh, is another one that will catapult us in that relationship. If we look out through Jesus's ministry, when you read the gospels, one of the things that fascinates me uh, when I read them, it says that as Jesus went from place to place, he had compassion on people. Uh, He saw them. He saw the needs that needed to be met, and he was willing to step into those messy situations. Mike talked to us from this idea of serving to love your neighbor as yourself, and that's the call that Jesus has called on us. As people are choosing to follow him and being changed by him or committed to his mission, is to truly put others above ourselves, uh, to seek first his kingdom. Uh, And that's no different than what we're going to talk about today. Uh, Today, we're going to talk about this word generosity. Uh, And I know at first, when you hear that, you could just automatically think we're going to be talking about money, and so you're going to tune out. Uh, I beg you uh, not to think that. Uh, We will talk about money. That is a part of generosity. Uh, But there's more to it than that that we're going to look at. So uh, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to dive into this. Father, we thank you for this morning, and we thank you for the opportunity to, to look at your word especially around this idea of generosity, of being generous, and what that means for us. And how we, if we develop even just a, and change a, maybe a little bit of what we're currently doing, uh, the significant impact that it can have, not only on our, our lives personally and spiritually, but also on the lives of those around us. And so, Father, speak to us this morning. And it's your son's name we pray. Amen. Uh, to, to make sure we're all on the same page, I, and especially with conversations like this, 
uh, I like to, to make sure we have the same definition. Uh, definitions carry uh, a lot of meaning and a lot of different things, and your understanding of one word and mine could be completely different, and that's where uh, disagreement happens. Um, and it still may. Uh, I'm not going to say that you're not going to disagree with what I have to say, but it's a possibility. Uh, but on the screen, you're going to find this. It's in your notes as well. Uh, to be generous uh, reveals this. Of a person showing a readiness to give of something as money or time, uh, more than is strictly necessary or expected. To give more of something as money or time than is uh, strictly expected. I think we'd all agree that when we think of what does it mean to be generous, that this definition would be one that we re resonate with. Um, there's one that comes to mind uh, that when I see someone in need or I see something to be done, uh, that I can give into that with my money or time. Um, and we, we see this even throughout Scripture. This idea of being generous, of giving, um, is, a, is a huge importance to understanding what it means to follow Jesus. In preparation for this message, I, I got on Bible Gateway and I did a, a word search, um, and I wanted to look at some different words that we would really connect to what does it mean to be in relationship with Jesus or understand to come into relationship with him. So words like believe, uh, pray, and love, and give. And the, the results that came were pretty interesting to me, I think. Um, belief, right? Believe to understand the, the, the crux of our faith, to believe in Jesus and what he did and died on the cross for us and what that means for us personally, uh, uh, only shows up uh, 289 times. Uh, this is like looking through the NIV, so different translations may be a little different, but they're going to be very similar. Uh, the word pray is 367. Uh, the word love right? We, we understand Jesus of what it means to, to love your neighbor as yourself, for God so loved the world, right? As 686 times. And the word give shows up 1,433 times. And if you go through that and you look through the Old Testament and the New Testament and understanding the, the concepts and not just the, the generic word of give, but look at the context of the more often than not, the majority of the time when that word give is used, Right? It's in the aspect of benefiting others, um, right? that Jesus gave to them, right? or he gives to us, or that we should give to those around us. Uh, a few of those um, examples are in Psalm 37, 21. It says, the wicked and borrowed do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Proverbs 11, 24, and 25, one person gives freely yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly and, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Uh, whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Luke 6, 38 says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over uh, will be poured into your lap. For with, uh, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. In Matthew 5, 42, give to one who asks, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. That this idea, this theme, over and over and over again, begins to point to us to, if, if I'm choosing to follow Jesus, to seek his kingdom first, and to understand what he's called for me and my lifestyle and the habits that I need to bring into, generosity is one of them. More often than not, I think a lot of us, we, we look at generosity um, more in a, a spontaneous type of way, that when a need comes up or something that we know we can help contribute to, um, we kind of are very spontaneous in that. We haven't built the habit, we haven't developed the streak of making that a, a regular routine. And so we understand what it means to be generous. And everyone in this room, I think I could, I could speak for yourselves, is that you, you want to be generous people. Um, but more often than not, it's in those spontaneous moments or the sporadic or sparing moments that we choose generosity. And so th today I want us to maybe uh, move from being generous to understanding what it looks like to live generous. And I know that's not grammatically correct, right? But what does it mean to live generous, to have that consistency, to build uh, maybe some habits or some follow a few simple steps that will allow us then to truly live generous, more generous than we ever have been before in regards to our time, our resources, and our finances. For me, growing up, uh, generosity was something that I think was portrayed for me. Um, and really, when it comes to this idea, right, if it's never been modeled for you before, it may be harder to, to step into and to see the rewarding benefits of it. 
Uh, but growing up, uh, we didn't have much. Uh, my mom was uh, in a wheelchair the last five years of her life. We lived off her social security check. Um, so we, we lived in lower income housing. We had uh, food assistance and things provided to us. But I remember just her heart <laughs> for Jesus, but also her heart for people. Uh, my mom never met a stranger, and she would sit there and talk to you, and uh, she would get to know your life story in just a little bit of time because um, she loved to listen to people. And I re- recall uh, probably a year before she passed, it was Thanksgiving, uh, probably around 2000, um, that we were at a grocery store, and uh, the lady in front of us didn't have the means to, to get everything uh, she was wanting to get uh, from a financial standpoint. And so my mom just uh, took that a part of our bill um, and, and did that. And then uh, we ended up finding out through that conversation, too, this woman needed a ride home. Otherwise, she was going to walk home with all of her groceries. Uh, so we loaded up everything, and we gave her a ride home. And through that conversation, my mom and this, this lady had, uh, it came to light that as Thanksgiving was around the corner, that they weren't going to be able to have maybe the traditional Thanksgiving meal because they didn't have the resources or things. Uh, just a few days earlier uh, that week, uh, my home church and First Church of Christ in Xenia had given us a box of supplies so that we could, uh, as a family, have a Thanksgiving meal that year. Um, and I remember after, when we dropped that lady off, uh, my mom, uh, I was driving us home, and we got home, and she decided to take that box of stuff that we had gotten, uh, to load it back up in the car, to drive it back to this lady's house, knock on the door, and just to give it to her uh, so that their family could have it, knowing that we, we still had a place to go for Thanksgiving. Like we were going to go to my grandma's and, and still be able to have something. And so I just remember those moments, and it seemed like time after time she would do those little types of things, uh, not really educating me on them or speaking them to me, but seeing the consistency of that helped me understand a little bit more of what it means to be generous. Uh, I don't get it perfect all the time, trust me. Um, I'm very at fault at times of just being sporadic and maybe spontaneous in it. Um, but I think if we look at what we're going to talk about today, there's three just simple steps, and it may be very simplistic, uh, but it's very hard to begin to do. I think we could live generous. And the first thing that ge- uh, people who live generous do is that generous people have a plan. Uh, First and foremost, they've decided that they uh, have a plan, and so they've chosen their why. Why that giving needs to be the top priority uh, in in their lives. And for me, and and for some of you as a follower of Jesus, right, he's called us to this idea and this lifestyle, that we need to put others first, seek first his kingdom, and that my why is because of uh, of his sacrifice and my surrenderance and obedience to him. And so because of that, I'm going to give out of the things that he's blessed me with. And so that's determined my why. And so for you, if you don't have that why, or uh, really begin to think, what is your why? Why do you want to be generous? Uh, why is it that you want to help others, right? Um, and it comes from uh, understanding more and more of who Jesus is ultimately in our lives. And so develop that plan, f- start and for, for first and foremost, with the why, and allow that plan to maybe begin to be played out When it comes to finances, Ron Blue in his book, Master Your Money, he talks about that there's five ways that we typically spend our money, right? Uh, The first one is we spend it (laughs) just on ourselves. Uh, The second is that we repay debt, we pay uh, pay our taxes, we save it, and then we give it, right? Without a plan in place, uh, with our time, with our resources, and our finances, right? If we're honest, and we've all been here, that giving will come last, but as followers of Jesus, if people are being committed to his mission and seeking others and wanting to be changed by him, right, he calls us to flip that, that giving should be first and that the plan is that no matter what comes in, whether it's I'm going to have my time and my schedule, I'm going to the resources that I have, my finances, the first thing that I've decided is I'm going to give. Um, and that begins of setting up that plan. That will begin to change the process of of how and when uh, we can be generous. And the reality is that if the give idea is at the top, right, that we'll see that occur more and more in our lives. Uh, The second thing that generous people uh, do is that generous people pre-decide. And so that's continuing off this idea of our plan, that they're calculated. They've predetermined what it is and how much they can do and give. 
right, with my time, that if I want to, to serve in a certain area, that I'm going to give uh, 30 minutes to an hour a week, uh, that I'm going to block and protect, because we know if we don't block or protect those times on our calendars, uh, if we don't have a budget in place when it comes to our spending, right, uh, all that just gets eaten up by who knows what <laughs> over time, right? And so that I've developed the plan, I've, I've pre-decided. I was talking to an individual um, at my conference uh, last week, uh, they're out of Boston, uh, but he was telling me that with his painters and things that he does at times is um, he keeps uh, articles of clothing um, in his car uh, for his crews at times if he needs them. And so what he, his family has decided um, is that as they get a new article of clothing, uh, two go out. So as one comes in, two go out. And so really without a plan in place and it have been calculated, right, we may just do that, you know, it's spring cleaning, so I got to go through the closet. Or you realize all of a sudden, I haven't done laundry in three weeks. I got way too much clothes. Let's do something with it. So what happens if we become more proactive in that? We pre-decide, we're calculated. With our finances, um, that we're, we've made that budget, we've looked at it, we've chosen a percentage um, because knowing if I choose a percentage that can rise and fall based off of just my life experiences and expectations at the time, of where I'm at with that. So begin to establish a plan, determine your why, be pre-calculated, understand what it is that you can give. As Jesus followers, I think, right, it's, it's fair to, um, to say this too, is that it kind of has to hurt a little bit, right? That my, my giving isn't supposed to be just this comfortable thing that I do, right? That in understanding to be changed, uh, and to live a lifestyle that Jesus calls us to live, it's going to require sacrifice. It's going to require surrenderance in all of these aspects when it comes to this idea of generosity. The, the third thing that um, generous people do to, in order to live generous is that they're proactive. That because I've made my plan, I've, I've calculated and predetermined and decided how much and what I can do, when I can do it, uh, I know where it's going to go. I don't have to be asked. That I've, I've determined that first and foremost, my why, Jesus, because of what he's done for me, I'm going to give and give first. Uh, I've determined this amount, and this is where I'm going to do it. Uh, there's two things that I want to talk about that I think can help us determine those areas of where, right? And the first one is that, what are you grateful for? Just think about that. Where are the areas in your lives, the things that you, you are a part of that you're grateful for? And that you want to uh, continue to support and encourage through your time, through your resources, and through your finances. Uh, for, for us, like, I am truly grateful for this place. And I don't say that just because I'm up here on stage, right? I, I don't work here anymore. Um, but I, my family and I, we've still chosen to attend here because of the relationships we've built, because of the impact that the children's ministry has on my family, uh, knowing that I can partner with this community to help them understand who Jesus is in their lives. And so we continue to give here and we serve here in different capacities because we truly are grateful for this place. And the second thing is what, what breaks your heart? What are those areas that you see in the world, right, that, that you see something and you want to be a part of it in some way, of coming alongside and, and passing out clothes at threads for people who, who desperately need clothing, right? of going and, and giving up your time or even helping financially uh, with bog ministries uh, for people who are food insecure and passing those out and being able to understand what that does for a family. Um, this year I, I, at our work, uh, I lead our social impact group at Soto Pro. Uh, and a, a group of five or six of us, we went to serve at bog ministries in Centerville. And just, it was neat, to, neat to see, I, I don't like to say that, but that the experience of right understanding what it means to those people uh, who who desperately need food, especially with how much eggs cost these days, uh, that what it means to come alongside them and to help them in such a tangible way, right? They get just as much out of it as you will uh, by serving and giving up that time. So, what is it that you're grateful for, and what is it that breaks your heart? Use those as filters to then come back to your why, your calculated. And you're proactive. You don't have to be asked. That spontaneous giving can still happen, right? Uh, but you know where everything's going. You've, you've determined and created this plan ahead of time. 
to where that you can continue this habit then to where it's not the three S's of, of giving, right? Sporadic, sparing, and um, spontaneous. But it can become a consistent thing day after day after day. And when I, when I think about this and when I think about this idea um, in regards to our relationship with Jesus, um, I begin to see these, these steps and these processes uh, be filtered out in what he did for us by sending his son to the cross for us. In John 3.16, right, we read this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, he had a plan, right? If we understand, if we've read scripture, we understand his plan, uh, and his plan was for uh, restoration and redemption for the things that had been broken, and so for you and I to come into a relationship with him. And part of that plan understood that there was a cost, that the wages of sin was death, but that he sent his son to live amongst us, to die a death he didn't deserve, so that we could be in relationship with him. And so he was proactive in that. And so when it comes to just the things that we look at each and every day, when it comes to our finances, our resources, our time, and even our relationships, especially our relationship with Jesus, this, this simple steps, I think, can help us understand more deeply of how we can apply it day after day to create a streak that will make an impact not only on our lives personally, uh, but spiritually and also, more importantly, on the lives of those around us. So I'm going to pray, and then in a minute, uh, we're going to take communion. Father, we thank you for this morning, and we thank you for the opportunity to be reminded of, of who you are to see how generous you are and the call for us as well uh, to live generous, uh, to, to move away from these, these sparing and spontaneous moments at times, but to truly trust in you uh, and to create a plan and to be proactive and, and calculated in what we do. And so, Father, help us just even maybe move 1% better this week. <laughs> Uh, and what it un means for us to be generous. We thank you, and we love you. In your son's name we pray, amen. Each week we, we come to this time to where, as I said, we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Uh, and we, we do that by taking a, a wafer and, and drinking uh, some juice. And as we're reminded in that, that passage I just read, Right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that his body was broken so that you and I could be in relationship with him. And so we take the bread and we take the juice. And so we're going to do that uh, at this moment. Uh, and so I encourage you to take the bread that represents the body that was broken for you. And then we take the juice that, remember, or that represents the blood that was shed for us, that paid a debt that we couldn't pay um, so that we could be in relationship with him. Our hope this morning is that as we look at these habits and we look at these streaks that we're trying to cultivate uh, to help us not only personally but spiritually but also impact the lives of those around us, that we would see the importance of what it means to live generous, that we develop a plan, that we be calculated and predecide, and that we'd be proactive just as our Father showed us and what it meant by Him sending His Son.